Hey everyone, welcome back. This is John from Friends of Your Benefits. Today we have a very special guest. We have Caroline Susie, our resident expert and actual dietitian. Caroline, welcome to the show. Th- thanks Thank for being you. here. Thank you. Actual dietitian. Yes, sir. Here I am. Awesome. Awesome. So really, I guess to begin, so I've heard the term dietitian thrown out there, and obviously you are an actual dietitian, but I've also heard the term nutritionist. Can you tell our viewers what's the actual difference? Yeah, so I joke, there's two ways to upset a dietitian. One, spell dietitian with a C instead of a T, and the (laughs) second is to call them a nutritionist. So here's the deal. To be a dietitian, it's no easy feat. And if there's any dietitians listening to this, they will be clapping their hands and throwing them up in the air. So right now we have to have a minimum of our uh, minimum of bachelor's degree. Many dietitians are well beyond that, but starting in 2024, it will be required to have your master's. Uh, Side note, thank God that that was (laughs) after I went to school. So yeah, (laughs) bachelor's degree minimum uh, from obviously an accredited university. You also have to complete a 1200 hour internship and those internships, they're, they're hard to find and hard to get placed with. Um, But it's during that time where we really get boots on the ground training and experience. And then once you have your degree and you've completed this internship, uh, then you have to sit for our national test. Once you pass our national test, then you now are officially a registered dietitian. And then varying on which state you live will uh, depend on licensure laws. Every state is different with that. So uh, depending on where you live, you can check and see if that licensure is required or not by your state. Nutritionists, on the other hand, you know what? Update your LinkedIn. You, my friend, are a nutritionist. There's no definition for it. Anybody. <laughs> Um, and you know, I say it joking, but I also say it, it's, I, I do, it scares me because I do think it's a danger to the public that anybody can take, you know, a two hour webinar or a weekend course. And, and all of a sudden you are the expert. And just because you eat does not make you an expert. And there's so many underlying medical conditions and things that you have to be cognizant of to, to keep your patient and to keep the public safe. So that's the biggest difference is, is one is, uh, truly credentialed and Mm -hmm. one is not. Well, I can promise you this. I'm definitely not updating my LinkedIn profile. So for anyone out there who wants true diet advice, Caroline is your person, but we'll be certain to provide her advice on these videos. So Caroline, obviously within America, right? We have um, a weight problem, right? Many Americans are overweight and they're looking to get the right tools and resources. And obviously many Americans do have health insurance, particularly from their employers. If there was a member out there who wanted to access a dietitian and use their health insurance, how would they actually go about that process? So two ways, Um, you wanna make sure the person that you're working with is a registered dietitian. So you can look for the credentialing behind that person's name. It's gonna say RD for registered dietitian or RDN, registered dietitian nutritionist. Those, we use those interchangeably in our field. Um, first and foremost, you can call the 1-800 number on the back of your insurance ID card and understand what services are covered. Um, alternatively, you can visit eatright.org. Eatright.org is the professional organization for dietitians. And there's a button on the top right that says find an expert. And you can click that, type in your zip code and um, everybody that will pop up and you'll be able to see those that do take insurance and those that are um, cash pay only. Um, you know, it, it, it's a little frustrating in our field because we wish that, that more things were covered. Um, and, and like other things, it is based off Medicare and Medicaid. Uh, so reimbursement sure. isn't where we want it to be. Uh, okay. A lot of times there's gonna have to be a referral from your primary care physician and or diagnosis code, um, such as if you're living with obesity or living with hypertension or hyperlipidemia, so elevated cholesterol, um, diabetes, elevated blood sugar, all those types of things. There are certain plans that do cover preventative visits. Um, so again, the best bet is to call that 1-800 number on the back of your insurance card uh, and or check with your HR to better understand what services are covered by the dietitian. And we'll be certain to include that link to the website that you mentioned in the comments below. 
So Caroline, since we're on the subject of health insurance, so if I look at my own health insurance plan, right, I see if I open the app, there is this section about weight management and how they potentially coach me through the process. So here's a question for you. Do people actually use those apps and those coaching services and do they actually work? So the diet industry is a billion dollar industry. So wow. people are <laughs> a lot of money. <laughs> and I joke, I mean, diets, work, right? Anytime that you restrict, you're going to see weight loss. Um, but the, the, the name of the game here is consistency and what can lead to long-term weight loss. So what we see in the employer space is there's a lot of different vendors out there um, that offer uh, solutions addressing weight management or chronic condition prevention. There's also a lot of direct consumer products. I mean, turn on your TV in January and we're flooded with like, hey, we know what you did in December. <laughs> We'd like to help you. Um, I think that um, any, again, anytime that you restrict, you will see weight loss, but it's that bridge to uh, what is going to be more of a lifestyle and a, and a daily routine. So best practices is one size does not fit all. It's a personalized approach to nutrition um, and having evidence-based recommendations and not, um, not some sort of fad situation. Um, that's, that's what we like to see. Um, do, do they work? I think it depends on who you ask. Um, a lot of the vendors in this space will say yes, and they'll show you all their total pounds loss. But as you started out this video, you said, you know, yeah, you look at the statistics, 70% of the U.S. population is overweight and or living with obesity. So um, there's obviously a lot going on and it's very multifactorial, um, your age, your height, your weight, your gender, your family history, your medical conditions, your stress, your socioeconomic. I mean, it is so many things going on contributing to weight management and obesity. It's just not as simple as putting in a weight management vendor or weight loss vendor and be like, all right, our problems are going to be solved. <laughs> yeah, no, Caroline's uh, super, super helpful. Really, really appreciate the insight. And for our viewers out there, if you actually click right here, we're going to have Caroline back and Caroline is going to talk about how you can get your body ready for bathing suit season. Stay tuned. And as always, we encourage you to like the video, share and ring the bell, and we'll be certain to have more content like this in the future. Thanks for joining.